Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to the YouTube channel Plantastic. Today, we are going to explore the topic of plant tissue culture with the introduction and application. Why is there a need for plant tissue culture? This is because conventional propagation such as cutting and air layering is slow and technical. The seeds take longer time to mature, and it is not standardized in terms of growth and genetic. Moreover, the seeds are seasonal production of a plant. Conventional cuttings are vulnerable to disease and pest, therefore causing insufficient of the stock plant's material for cuttings. Due to the needs of the cuttings from the stock plant, there will be insufficient space for the stock plants and it is not very cost-effective to maintain a stock plant. Alright, first of all, let's get into the history and the background of plant tissue culture. In year 1902, it was first started by the German botanist who is known as the father of plant tissue culture, Gottlieb Herberland. What is plant tissue culture? Plant tissue culture is the science of growing plant cells, tissues, or organs isolated from the mud plant, incubate onto the artificial media supplemented with plant growth regulators in aseptic conditions under the controlled environment. Tissue culture techniques are routinely used for mass propagation and the establishment of disease-free stock material. Alright, before we proceed into details, here are some common terms found in plant tissue culture. First, in vitro which literally means in glass. It is the study on living material that are performed outside the living organism from which the material is derived. De novo literally means of new. It's a process of starting from the beginning. As plant is the part of the plant, there can be any parts such as shoot, leaf, root, flower, and fruit. Aseptic is a condition that is free from microbes. Totipotency is the ability of an S plant to grow and regenerate that remains all the general features of a mother plant. In plant tissue culture, there are two types of growth which are organized and unorganized growth. Organized growth started with the plant's organs such as shoots, roots, leaves, young flower buds, or small fruits. It is considered as a maintenance of a defined structure through the novel organ formation, then known as organogenesis or morphogenesis. Unorganized growth is started with the S plant that is seldom found in nature. It is undifferentiated callus, which are the cluster of cells. There are subculture in gel media and liquid media for the commenced cell suspension culture. The undifferentiated callus can be differentiated upon the supplementations in the media. In this video, we will focus on only organized growth which is known as micropropagation technique. Micropropagation is one of the most commonly used techniques in plant tissue culture. It involves five stages. Stage 0, mother donor plant and explant selection. Stage 1, Establishment of aesthetic culture. Stage 2. In vitro multiplication. Stage 3. In vitro rooting. Stage 4. Transplanting and acclimatization. Alright, let's get through the micropropagation stage by stage. First, stage 0. Maintenance of mother donor plants and as plant selection. We have to apply horticultural practices on mother donor plant, such as watering, trimming, fertilize with correct amount, as well as spray the fungicide and insecticides if needed. In micropropagation, the S plant is usually chosen from the young and juvenile shoots. In stage 1, establishment of aesthetic culture, we have to perform some cleaning process prior to the surface sterilization, which are defoliation, is a process of removal of leaves, cleaning, and washing of the S plant to rinse off the dirt before we proceed to surface sterilization. 
Surface sterilization involves different surfactants such as ethanol at 70 to 80 percent and also chemicals that contain sodium hypochlorite. Although mercury chloride is commonly used and found in some articles, but it is highly dangerous if you don't handle it properly. After sterilization, the explant is then incubated onto the sterile neutral media that has been sterilized through autoclave, incubated in the condition of 25 degrees Celsius with 16 hours photo period. Next, stage 2. In vitro multiplication. That is optimized by manipulating the concentration of plant growth regulator, which is PGR, then commonly known as plant hormone. Common plant growth regulator used in this stage is cytokinin that promotes the multiple shoot induction and elongation. From here, exponential multiplication can be achieved. Subsequently, stage 3, in vitro rooting. The root formation is optimized by changing the concentration of plant growth regulator, mainly oxygen, to promote root induction and elongation. Lastly, stage 4, which is transplanting and acclimatization. Acclimatization is also known as the hardening process, which it can be split into primary and secondary stage of hardening. First, the rooted plantlets will be taken out carefully and the agar is washed off without the damage of root system or with minimal damage of root system. It is recommended to acclimatize the plantlets as following conditions. The room temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius with the humidity around 50 to 60 percent and the shaded area with indirect sunlight or you can put it under the indoor lighting. This is to allow the adaptation of the plantlets to be occur by slowly decrease the humidity and increase the temperature to the temperature at the field. After the plants are hardened, they are ready to be planted at the field. Have you ever wondered what are the most common commercialized species in plant tissue culture? The answers are banana, which is known as Musa species. Banana tissue culture is highly demanded in the market for plantation purposes due to the needs of the banana in the market is very high. Secondly, the orchids. Orchids are cultivated as ornamental or medicinal plant. This is because the seeds have very low germination rate in the nature due to the seeds is lacking of the endosperm. Therefore, in nature, the seeds have to co-culture with certain fungus in order to germinate. However, in plant tissue culture technology, it can be germinated easily. So, what are the good sides of using micropropagation? It can be used to conserve the germplasm and rescue the endangered plant species from extinction. It can produce large scale of the genetic identical clones for standardization in short period. It can be applied in plant breeding to improve the genetic content through somaclonal variations. On the other hand, disadvantages of micropropagation are due to the same genetic contents of the clones, all batches are having the same rate of the tolerance and resistance to the environment as well as to the pest and diseases. Somoclonal variations can be occurred through the subculture period, which may lead to the epigenetic changes. Furthermore, micropropagation is a labor-intensive process in which the protocols for each species and clones needed to be optimized and established. Plant tissue culture can be further explored by using Temporary Immersion System TIS, and Bioreactor. Large-scale extraction of active medicinal compounds can be done through the suspension cultures. Protoplast isolation and fusion can be studied for genetic improvement. In addition, genetic engineering such as genetic transformation can be applied to produce a plant with resistant and high nutritional values. Cryopreservation and the production of synthetic seeds can be optimized for the endangered species. Alright, it is almost the end of this video about the introduction of plant tissue culture. More videos will be uploaded in future. 
Don't forget to subscribe, share and hit up the notification button for subsequent videos on plant science. You may also find me at the LinkedIn profile for the connection. This is not a sponsored video and I would like to share with every one of you the reference I used in this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.